Market structures, perfect competition, short run losses, long run break even, constant cost industry, take two. Hey everybody, welcome back. We've got a good one for you. We're doing market structures, gonna look at perfect competition. We're gonna show a firm that's making short run losses, and then we're gonna show the movement to long run break even, okay? In fact, when I say a firm's incurring short run losses, I'm actually saying firms. The firms in this industry are incurring short run losses, okay? And we're gonna show the movement to long run break even. In this particular video, guys, we're gonna assume constant cost industry, which is kind of a weird assumption, but it is the default of AP and a lot of college professors. What's the constant cost industry? It is when either suppliers move in or exit an industry. Notice what I'm doing to the market supply curve. Suppliers move in or when suppliers exit, that there's no impact on the input prices for production, okay? Those products, those inputs to production, the prices of those goods are not changing. So guess what? The cost of producing is not changing, i.e. we're not gonna shift the MC or the ATC curves when the supply market changes, okay? Now, of course, that is not what would be the case if we had what's called an increasing cost industry. In an increasing cost industry, anytime we shift supply market, we should also shift the cost curves, okay? But that's not what we're doing here because we've got constant cost industry. That means those cost curves are staying constant. We're not gonna move them through the whole thing once we've got them on the board. Don't have them on the board yet. Let's get there, okay? So short run losses. We've got the market, we got the firm. Why do we need the market? Price market, okay? The market determines the price. The firm, they're a price taker. That's, the, what, that's their price, right? It's the market price. Price firm gives us the demand firm and the MR curve. The uh, demand curve, the firm faces, and the firm's MR curve. What's the next curve we need? We need the MC. Why do we want that MC? Why is that so important to get up that up there early? Because it's the intersection of MC and MR that gives us our output level, okay? Firms are making decisions at the margin. They are going to produce goods as long as MR is above MC for any good, and they're gonna stop when they're equal because they're not gonna produce any of those goods for which MC exceeds MR. So let's go ahead and bring that down. We've got the output level, okay? Q, profit max, or loss min. I better put loss min also, okay? I always put profit max, but guys, that Q is actually profit max or loss min. And since I'm doing losses, let's put loss min up there. So we've got the MC, we got the MR. What do we need now? Well, to show losses, we need the average total cost curve. Why do we need the average total cost curve? Because we need to be able to see total cost. You see, we can already see total revenue. Price, that vertical distance, times Q. So that box right there, that's total revenue. We need to be able to see total cost. Let's put in the ATC curve. Now, before I get to it, I just wanna like say something here as far as this quantity and this little dash line. Something that's good to do when you find out the quantity, it's such an important thing what the quantity is, is do that little dash line all the way up, okay? We want to see this horizontal distance, okay? We wanna see that horizontal distance throughout the entire graph. It's a heck of important reference line. Now let me draw in the ATC. Got two constraints for ATC. The two constraints for ATC is I want ATC to be above the price when I hit that output level, and I want ATC to be downward sloping till I hit MC, and then upward sloping after that. So here's how it goes, okay? Pretty simple to do, by the way, just like that. I hit uh, the, the first two criteria pretty good. I just gotta finish it off, bring the ATC. So let's kind of recap on this. I'm downward sloping till I hit MC because as long as MC is below ATC, it's pulling the average down. When MC is above ATC, of course, it's pulling the average up. That's, of course, my minimum ATC, but that's not the dot I need here at the beginning. At the beginning, the dot I need is right there, okay? Why do I need that dot? Because this vertical distance is the average total cost at that level of output. So let me bring this over put ATC, and hopefully right now you can see the losses that are happening in the short run, okay? This box right there are the losses that are happening in the short run. So let's now show the adjustment, the long uh, run break even point. What's going to happen? To show this, I want to just kind of take a shot at you, because we want you to really understand this, okay? I want you to kind of take a shot with this ruler here. What's gonna happen when we're incurring losses? What you gotta know is supply is gonna shift left, right? So as supply shifts to the left, 
What's happening to the price market? There it is, guys. The price firm, the demand and MR line, they're all moving up, okay? So what I want you to see is the top of my ruler, and I want you to think of the top of my ruler as the new MR curve, okay? Once again, we bring that down. Make sure we know what's going on. Supply is definitely shifting left. As supply shifts left, price market's going up. If price market's going up, this line right here is moving up, and I want you to see the top of my ruler as that line. So take a look at this. Well, let's say we get to right there. Is that far enough? What I would want a student to see at this point is say, no, 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 it's not far enough. Because see right there where the top of my ruler hits the MC, just look where the top of my ruler hits the MC. Think vertically, okay? Go vertically up to the ATC line. We would still be incurring losses. So that's not how far we're gonna shift the supply curve. We're gonna shift it further. Now let me go to the next place that some uh, students are going to shift the supply curve, which is going to be wrong, and let me show you why, okay? So what some will do is they'll say, hey, I know in the long run we don't have any profits, any losses. i got to get the price up here to ATC. And since I need to get the price to ATC, once again, this is wrong thinking, okay? There's a little bit of right in it, but there's also wrong in it, okay? I know that that's going to shift all the way to right there. So they say, hey, I got to get that supply curve. See if I can keep that right there. Right there. So there's my supply market and there's my price. And that means this line right there would now be my demand and MR line. So let me show you why that is not correct. We'll take a look, close look at it. <coughs> if you look closely, MR, MC intersecting right there. At that intersection point between MR and MC, think vertically, the ATC is actually below it. That means we shifted the supply too far left, we raised the price too much, we now have short run profits happening. Guys, the price point, hey, that's not the ATC anymore. What would be the ATC? It would be right there. It would actually be underneath it. So we shifted it too far. So let me get rid of that. We don't want that line. That's not where we're going. So how far is the supply curve gonna shift left? It's going to shift left until we reach minimum ATC, okay? See if I can get that in here, all right? Just like that, bring that. I'm gonna mark, whoa, kind of messed that up, but I can still see the point. Let me draw in my new supply curve. There it is, there it is. Supply market long run. Let's take a look at this. Let's see how we did, okay? So this is my new price market. That means this is my new price firm, which means this is my new demand firm and my new MR line, right? Hopefully we all agree. Now, at this new MR line, it's hitting MC right there. So that is my level of output. Let me get rid of that one. That's not gonna be the level of output. There's my new long run level of output. And at that level of output, I'm hitting the ATC curve at my price firm, okay? Which is absolutely what we want. What are we seeing here? Price, okay, well, price times quantity. So this box right there is my total revenue. ATC, that vertical distance, ATC times quantity. That's my total cost. If ATC equals price firm, no profits, no losses, at least from an economic standpoint, okay? Let me be very clear. We've got zero economic profits. That means we actually have accounting profits. Why? Zero economic profits means that our revenue has covered all our explicit costs and all our implicit costs, okay? So that means we have positive accounting profits because accountants only look at the explicit costs. And if we have total revenues that cover both explicit and implicit, that means our total revenues are greater than our explicit costs. Accounting profit is being made, no economic profit. This is our situation, and we come up with this final equality, okay? At the last unit produced, which is now right there, okay? At that last unit produced, our marginal cost equals our marginal revenue equals minimum ATC, okay? This equality is what we now have for the last unit produced, and at that situation, we've got a situation where we've got no profits. In fact, you can add in one more thing. Just kind of, why don't we go ahead and put that there? Price firms. You can actually just see 
no profits, right? If we're at ATC and price is at the same place, no profits, no losses, that is how it works, guys, for a firm that was incurring losses in the short run. And this is the long run adjustment. When we have a constant cost industry, never shifted the MC, never shifted the ATC because of this constant cost industry. That's a lot, but hopefully you followed me on the whole thing. We'll see you in the next video.